Hey kiddos, thanks for joining me for episode three of Chronicles in Collecting, where we're going to do an unboxing of the Robot Spirits RX-78-2 Gundam and the MS-06 Zaku-2, um, both version A and I M E, uh, real marking version. Before we do that, I thought maybe I'd do a little bit of a primer for people who might not be familiar with Mobile Suit Gundam. It is a very far-reaching franchise. It started in uh, at the end of the 70s. It still continues to this day. There's lots of entries. So um, let's, di let's just dive right into it. So the original Mobile Suit Gundam, which is just called Mobile Suit Gundam, came out in 1979. Um, and that started the first sort of Gundam timeline that was explored, which is called the Universal Century. Um, and all the Gundams that came out in the 70s and 80s um, and the beginning of the 90s all took place in Universal Century. Uh, kind of about the mid-90s, that's when they started kind of doing alternate timelines uh, with G Gundam, Gundam Wing, uh, and a variety of others um, that continued. Those timelines have nothing to do with Universal Century, though they share a number of tropes um, and design and some storylines. But today we're going to be focused just on Universal Century and sort of the very beginning of the Gundam story, which, as I said, kind of is first presented to us in uh, 0079, um, obviously with the actual show coming out in 1979. Universal Century in Gundam lore was basically the start of when they sent humans into space. And in Universal Century 00, that's when they started sending the first people into space into, and they created these space colonies, which they refer to as sides. Um, now fast forward, you know, to some time after that, and you kind of have a situation that's a little bit similar to the uh, American Civil War, where the space colonists are ruled by the Earth Federation government, but they don't have any say into their own sort of leadership or representation, which, um, you know, obviously creates a little bit of unrest between the various colonies uh, and the Earth. Now, side three, which is um, obviously one of the colonies, is led by a man called Zian Daikun. And he's kind of more of a philosopher than, say, a savvy political leader. And basically, his theory is that just how, um, you know, when people are on Earth, gravity sort of weighs down your muscles and sort of creates this resistance to your body, the same thing is basically happening to your mind, and that once everyone goes into space, everyone's mind will be free of gravity and everyone will kind of create a better understanding of each other, um, which will kind of like lead to this enlightened era. And those people are what eventually get referred to as new types. Um, and that's a word that will come up continuously when um, kind of discussing Gundam in, in all its different forms. Zian Daikun is then killed by his sort of political rival rivals, the Zabi family. And this all sort of happens prior to episode one of Mobile Suit Gundam. Uh, so Daikun is killed by the Zabi family. They sort of take over. They're a much more like militaristic, sort of opportunistic group. They start a war with the Earth Federation. Now in the lead up to this, um, they are developing a mobile suit called the Zaku-2. Well, they, they develop a number of them that lead to the Zaku-2. The Zaku-2 is the one that we're kind of, I'm not going to, we don't need to go through the entire development history of the Zaku-2. Uh, no one's got that kind of time. Basically, they have a, um, you know, a battle or a scuffle. I, I don't know if it's an official battle with the Earth Federation. The Earth Federation basically shows up with like equipment that's maybe somewhat equivalent to sort of like what we have today. I mean, they have some spaceships, but like, we're not talking about anything like too outrageous sort of firepower wise and the Zeons show up with so the Zabi family after even though they killed Zeon Daikun they sort of use his philosophies for their political uh, ambitions and they name themselves the Zeon so the two sides that you have are Zeon and Earth Federation the Zeons basically show up with these guys and the Earth Federation has no mobile suits, and it's like bringing the gun to a proverbial knife, a proverbial gun to a knife fight, um, and they just sort of get wrecked. Um, at, at some point, eventually, the Earth Federation has their own mobile suit development. They develop a variety of mobile suits. One of the major ones is the first Gundam, the RX-78-2. In uh, Universal Century lore, the Gundams are made of a... Um, alloy called Gundarium. I don't think it's ever actually mentioned in the show. 
Uh, in other Gundam timelines, different things signify the Gundams. Um, but another big thing that signifies the Gundams is just sort of the design. Future Gundams sort of have the same, um, you could see in the head kind of this, this same V-shape uh, pattern there. And basically the setup of the, of, uh, the original Gundam is this first Gundam is deployed, the Zeons are kind of fighting it, and, you know, a lot of political drama sort of ensues. Um, you know, again, I don't want to kind of spoil the whole show. I'd, I'd highly recommend it. Um, there's kind of two versions of it that you could watch. There's the original Gundam 70, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, sometimes referred to Gundam, Mobile Suit Gundam 79. It's a 43-episode uh, series. The pacing is a little slow. The animation's a little weak. I mean, like I said, it's a show that came out in 1979. Um, though it does still hold up, the alternate form to watch it, which I might recommend, is there are kind of like three movies that kind of compile the entire series. Obviously, since they're shoving 43 episodes worth of content into, you know, three one-and-a-half-hour movies or so, uh, you're not going to get as much character development. Some, some stuff is glossed over. They change a few very minor plot points. Um, but you kind of get the gist of it. So I'd certainly recommend that to anyone who's interested in exploring um, Gundam. If you're interested of any of kind of like the political intrigue or some of the development of the Zaku 2, a show that might be of interest to you is called Gundam Origin. That's a more or less prequel to the original Gundam. Um, that was a comic that was released I don't know, probably 10, 15 years ago. And then there was an anime version of it that came out probably, you know, it came out over the course of a few years and, and ended a few years ago. And that's available both as a um, kind of direct-to-DVD series of movies, uh, commonly referred to as OVAs or original video animations. Um, I think it eventually was edited into a 26-episode series as well. I've, I would I'd recommend that as well. I don't like it as much as the original Gundam, um, but it does have its moments. But that sort of leads us to what we're going to be opening up today, and I thought it seemed fitting to kind of open these two together. So what we have here, again, is the... Um, so in Robot Spirits, there are, as you can imagine, I mean, RX-78-2 Gundam is one of the most iconic um, mobile suits, one of the most iconic anime characters of all time. There's a bazillion versions. Um, <laughs> similarly with the Zaku, I decided to go with these versus the other ones. I like these real marking versions. I mean, I've not seen these, but we'll, we'll get to in a minute. But they have a lot of these cool details, little insignias. They have model numbers. They, they just kind of add a little bit extra. Um, you know, sometimes when you have some of the more, you know, si simpler um, designs for some of the old, older mobile suits, you know, and you just have that kind of one color plastic. It almost looks like an unpainted model. So I just like to have all those little um, extra details Got a few notes here. So uh, this guy came out um, in April 2019. Actually, both of, both of these versions came out in April 2019, and they MSRP'd for 4,600 yen. But as you could probably see from the packaging, um, they're only available, you know, in a, a very specific shop in Japan. So I picked them up at about $95 a piece, so about double the MSRP. Um, you can get the non-real marking versions for, you know, a lot less than that, and they're usually pretty readily available. Um, so let's start in the order of development, and uh, let's take a look at the Zaku 2. I'm pretty excited to see these because I've, I've seen a lot of pictures of the regular versions. Put this to the side for now but I've not seen a lot of pictures of the uh, real marking version. Let's see what we got in here. All right. As I've mentioned before, kind of getting these plastic things off, sometimes a little annoying. Kind of pop it out of place and kind of sometimes, oh, I got it. So we, Got many of the Zaku's kind of iconic weapons. You got the Zaku axe, because which highly advanced mobile suit wouldn't carry a battle axe into battle? Uh, you got this machine gun, which is really not all that different than sort of the machine gun you might expect, you know, of, of current Earth weaponry. 
and take a look at the figure, at the figure itself. You know, you look at the older, you know, Gundam models, designs from, you know, 1979, and obviously they were sort of designed to be animated in 1979 and to, uh, you know, be figures that would be sold in 1979. Um, but I still really like them. You know, I think that I like the kind of clean lines, um, kind of cool colors, and there's, you know, just, I, I don't know what this is for, some hydraulic lift or something, but... You know, you got like cool spikes on his shoulder and stuff like that. I really like the um, real marking version of this. You got the Xeon symbol on his shoulder. Got the 06 model number there. I don't know what this arrow is. I'm sure it's very important. Um, you got this like red trim all around and kind of little arrows here and there. You could also see some stuff on the back, um, kind of the same vein. I think it makes the figure pop a little m more you know, versus just having the entire thing just say, be this, you know, same green color. Um, this guy didn't come with a stand like the uh, Metal Robots uh, Destiny that we looked at in an earlier episode. Um, but you could buy, you know, they all, all these figures use like a little standard um, port on the bottom there for uh, stands. They call them stages. So I just picked up a bunch of these uh, clear ones. I think there's like, it's like a two pack and they're usually like about 10 bucks or something like that. Sometimes they have them on sale and I, you know, I just bought like 15 or 20 just to stock up and you can um, pose to your heart's content. But uh, we'll put this guy to the side for now and uh, take a look at the RX-78. There's a variety of hands to hold all the different parts, and there's lots of different, um, lots of different little like holes in here where different stuff clip in. I think you could take the uh, clip off of the machine gun, and you know you could store it there. And the uh, battle axe has a little nib in it where you could attach it to his waist over there. Um, you know, so he's fully prepared for battle. All right, let's uh, take a look at this one. All right. Again, just try to get this plastic thing out. All right, let's, let's see what we got here. So here is the RX-78. We got another stand for him. Like I said, it's a, it's a two pack. So we'll throw this guy on the stand while we sort of look at him in more details here. If I could ever get this stand in here. All right. So taking a quick look at this guy, I mean, obviously it's, you know, it's a super iconic character. It's an awesome design. I think that the real marking version disappoints a little bit, at least compared to the Zaku. I mean, you got this stuff on the shoulder, you have the red trim here. It just seems to not fit the, the color scheme of this figure as well, in my opinion. You know, just when you look at, when you look at this, you look at this, the, you know, like I said, all the little numbers you got here and there and the little symbols, you don't really have as much of that um, on this RX-78. I mean, again, it's still a cool figure, but not quite sure if the uh, real marking premium of like double uh, is worth it for this guy versus, you know, a regular one. Um, to take a quick look at what it came with. So we got kind of the very iconic uh, Gundam shield. We see this, you'll see this on a lot of, of Gundams as we, you know, go through this line. Uh, he's got like a sniper rifle. Uh, he's got the beam sabers, 
that go into his backpack for handy storage. And then you have the, uh, I can get them out. Get the beam effects that you could attach to the beam saber as well as an extra beam saber here. I'm not quite sure what the extra one's for. I guess if you just want to pose him with the two on his back and then just have another one. Um, and obviously a, a variety of hands, you know, to hold all of his, his various weaponries. You know, I think another thing that I like a little bit more about the Zaku version of this figure is, I feel like with the Zaku hammer and the machine gun, that's about what you would expect the Zaku to have. Whereas the RX-78 had a whole bunch of different weapons, you know, over the course of the show. Um, you know, it had a rocket launcher, it had this like cool beam, beam javelin kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, this figure is a little bit more bare bones as far as the accessories and stuff like that. So you don't get all those other cool um, accessories and, you know, instead have to buy, you know, different versions um, to get those to add to this. And we might be unboxing some of those uh, in the future. Um, but with all that being said, we'll take one quick last look at these two guys side by side. The uh, Robot Spirits uh, version anime real marking versions of the Zaku 2 and the RX-78 Gundam. Um, thanks again for watching the video. And before we end it, I'll give a little bit of a sneak peek as to what we'll be taking a look at next time. And we have the Soul Chugokin GX68X Star Gal Gygar option set, Ultimate King of Braves version. Um, and as part of that, we'll take a look at the uh, GX68 Gal Gygar, obviously, which these accessories are for, um, and maybe get into a little bit of the plot of Gal Gygar, why you should care about it, why I like it, um, and why Bandai keeps making these very expensive uh, Soul of Togokin versions of it. Thanks again. Uh, please check out the other videos on the channel and keep collecting.